Hey, I'm Kathlon Gamer. Welcome back to FM24 Youth Factory, episode 13. All season long, we have dropped just four points in the league at home. Four. 19 home matches, 17 wins, two draws. But our biggest test of the entire season is going to come down to the next one. Eight matches left to go in the season. A win against Gloucester would put us eight. Eight points ahead. But a draw would maintain a five-point gap. And a loss, which would be our first of the season at home, would see the gap fall to just two points. Now, Gloucester and us have really pulled away from the league, the other contenders, a fair bit. We've got a, a pretty healthy gap. So it really does come down to this match even though there's still eight to play season's not done if we do lose i mean we still have a lead but it's a minor one they and us both had an easy schedule over the last month and you could see that we have been perfect over the last two month stretch both teams are missing some players kamara on international duty a left back babarin their starting left back, who has played almost every match this season, is also away on international duty. But Thornhill out with torn wrist ligaments. And Lanahan Penry's playing through an injury with injections uh, to get him through that. If we come out on top of this one, we might stop the injections and allow him to uh, recover. And we might get him back for the last match or two, depending on uh, the length of the injury remaining. But it's not going to get easy. Win, lose, or draw here against Gloucester. Next up's Real Bedford. On the road. And it's on the road where we have dropped some points. It's on the road where we have taken losses. And it's been against the teams in the playoff zone all but once. So that's going to be a difficult match to immediately go into. We could see uh, stretching the lead to eight points and immediately see it fall back down to five a match later, making this Gloucester match that much more important. Lose at home, 10th, but we've been handling those. Dartford, 13th, but we've been handling those. Gosport at home, that should be a win. Bromley on the road, though, very difficult match. So we've got two big away matches at playoff zone teams next month. Maidenhead, third place, but at home. And that's the one place where we have done okay but that's three huge matches in six well four huge matches in seven and then Hemel Hempstead 18th on the road to finish the season but that's four big matches of the eight that remain but by far the most important is the one we're about to play 15 points ahead of Maidenhead right now 15 with eight eight to play you get through the next two matches unscathed we can come out of those with six points not only do we stretch that lead on gloucester that's important and beat real bedford that's not as important but you take those six uh six points and we're looking at six to play with at least a 15 point lead mathematically it's nearly done other than that head to head with Gloucester. And that's why that's why this match is gonna be so so important because it's that head to head. It's just the one team that's really putting up a fight. All eleven are fired up as we enter this match in great form, having won everything for two months and Gloucester have dropped some points, but they had a really easy schedule over the last month, just as we did, bar one game against AFC Sudbury. Sudbury, they end up with that draw. They only dropped two points though, so we were really hoping to extend that gap. It puts much more importance on this match with only the two point further stretched lead. The previous month they did drop some points. It put us from second into the lead. It put us into a little bit of a lead. At eight points though, we'll see what can we do? This is such a huge game. Davidson forces the turnover. Lana had Penry's. Loses that one out of bounds, but that is one minute gone by. Possession early, favoring us. They seem to be picking up a bit more of the ball. 
as time goes on. Nice. Slide tackle there, Mortland. Landing on Penn Reese. Overlap? No. Switches to the other side. Adekunle drops it off. Atkins beats his man. Finds Adekunle inside. Flies it off for Lanahead. Penn Reese flashes it across goal. And Penn Reese, it's a tap in from there, but he blasts it in the back of the net. Regardless, and we lead 1-0 here in the 8th minute. What a fantastic run from Adekunle. Kept himself onside. Takes it all the way to the edge. Takes that one extra touch. Keeper looking for the shot, but that one extra touch goes right to the byline and then just through the legs of the keeper, and it's a tap-in. First shot of the game. First shot of the game, and it's 1-0. And very quickly, the, the game has uh, carried on from that point. We've played almost 20 minutes uh, beyond the goal already. Fadden possessing neither team seems to be getting anywhere with the ball. They can, can tend to hold it, but the other teams are organized and force the uh, turnovers. Line ahead, Penry's great pass. Davidson, great first touch. Red nap again to Davidson, no flag raised. And there's a shot from Atkins. It's saved, it's a corner. Just the second shot of the game. Akunle, far post, Hassel doesn't even challenge. Defender had the position, but Davidson, great ball recovery there. Stops the counter attack. That second shot was on target, by the way, and ultimately possession is very much going our direction. 61% now as we approach halftime. But here is a throw from a dangerous position. Antwi finds a little space, curls that one towards the upper corner, but it's got much too much height on it. And that was their first and only attempt of the half. Generally hard with a 1-0 lead, but all 11 players are fired up as we enter the second half of this one. Pressure is good, but no turnover there. McFadden clears it out for the throw-in from a dangerous position. That's where they got their shot previously, but nothing came of that one. We've played 10 minutes of the second half. Now 15. The longer highlights go on with nothing happening, the better. Uh, the one player that's struggling is Jones, but he is the backup. We don't have a backup for him. We've played well over an hour now. It's getting late. Uh, we're going to go balanced. We want to stay behind the ball a little bit more. Turnover. Davidson lays it off. Hassel. Now to McFadden. Over the top for Lanahead. Penn race. And he's beaten his man, and he flag stayed down, so it's going to count. He was behind his man, but I'm guessing the center backs were in a little bit deeper. Not, well, not that deep into mid. I'm guessing it's number four, but we don't see it from this angle. Great ball, though. Fantastic ball from McFadden. There you go. There's the blue line is where their defense is. So we don't see him, but yes, he's a yard on side. Great run. Even better pass. Two goal lead. Two goal lead. Uh, let's go ahead and start the time wasting and the set piece play out of position. We're going to drop a little bit here just to start getting behind the ball a little bit more. Uh, now we will start running using subs to our advantage. We're going to go ahead and bring on Primus and then we're going to change the position. Hello, stoppage time. Just like that. Wow. Put them both on ball winning. You got a playmaker ahead of you. Uh, in fact, he's better as a ball winner, so we'll put him on ball winner as support. All three of them helping recover the ball here. Final seconds. It's our corner. It's going to be our points, folks. 2 0. Not domination, but we put the ball in the back of the net when we needed to, and they've done absolutely nothing today. One shot attempt is all. We only had five. Three on target, but where it counted, we, we put the ball in the back of the net, and the XG suggests that we deserved to put the ball in the back of the net. 1.2 XG on just five attempts, just three on target. That's a lot of XG for such a small, small run there. That first goal, though, fantastic. You can see most of the XG came off. Actually, virtually all of the XG came off of the two goals, right? I mean, that's... We had... 0 0.01 and did we even get to point no we had 0 
XG otherwise. <laughs> so 1.185 of 1.2 XG came on the two goals. We had two chances, folks, and we took advantage of both. Great ratings for the team. Fantastic play. Overall, kept possession throughout. Clear-cut chances was two. And, and we put them both in the back of the net. Not many chances, but efficient, clinical. More importantly, eight points ahead. Seven left to play in the season. Only one team to challenge. Those three extra points make a big difference on those behind us, even if they kept pace running out of games real fast. Thanks to that win, that put us in a strong position. Now we have one more really important game coming up. And I should probably do injections one more time but it's I'm really playing with fire messing with Lanahan Penrees and having him play through this uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave it to the physio now three to four weeks I'm gonna leave him out for the next few matches we're now down two guys but it's time we got him through the key match 11th straight win Quick statistical analysis of Atakunle, who has not been our top guy, right? Lana and Penrace really has been the one who has dominated this year. But Atakunle, 19 years of age, has been good. And you can see he's better than league average everything, attacking-wise. And you can see he's very much near the top in progressive passes and key passes per 90. Showing up in those stats as well is our team once again in the... Uh, team attacking and you can see just how high we are in this one goals per game not top of the league non penalty expected goals per game very much up there but not top of the league shots per game only slightly above average actually and the on target uh, ratio is certainly better than average but not crazy dribbles per game isn't that high but the cross completion is very good 20 percent and better near the top of the league for that pass completion 89 percent we're very used to 90 percent or better uh, over past seasons but playing against better opposition has started to uh, impact those kind of ratings and obviously we didn't get promoted last season we didn't dominate the way we are used to but fouls against per game still only right there that's that's one of those things. the The reputation we we, we talked. Uh, if you if you watch back to the FM twenty three portion of this series, there was a big discussion that went on for a number of episodes about how reputation impacts the referee's whistle. We were way way behind the other teams around us when it came to getting calls, completely dominating. And you'd see the stats, and you'd see one thing that just didn't add up with the flow of gameplay and how things were working and that was simply that we just did not get calls and we got punished at a much heavier rate than our opponents we'd get yellow cards and red cards at crazy rates when we weren't hardly committing any fouls and opposition they weren't getting called for jack they were getting away with everything but now we have a reputation that is okay for our level and here we are at fouls against per game is right there bang average player of the month goes to paul davidson seven goals in six appearances and a 7.75 rating last episode we introduced our youth intake for the year there are four top talents in the end i ended up taking 11 of the players uh, from the class so that's gonna free up some spots that we can then put into uh uh, releasing some others at the moment i'm down to three senior squad players that have not signed a contract for next year as of yet and that is out of a desire to move on but with the minimum security that we have they won't leave as free agents last minute i will extend them by one year on their contracts that's part of our minimum security but for now that that by the way makes them very unhappy so we there is a side effect regarding that one, but we're, we're down to just those three that are holding out. Not the case with our U21s, though, where I'm set to release six players. So we have 11 
new from the intake, and we have six set to be outgoing uh, youngsters. And you can see through all six, we've got between a 32 and a 43 current ability, meaning none of them have developed well, and none of them have particularly good potential ability. They have better potential ability than the ones we released in previous years, but this is now coming down to guys that just don't necessarily train well. David Whittington is training okay, but at a 43.82, the 18-year-old, and he's the only youngster, and you can see most of these guys are all a little bit on the older side, and most of them are not training particular well. Uh, Milden Hall's starting to pick up pace a little bit and improve a little bit, but he's still just a 37 guard ability. You know, the 23-year-old, he's been with us for years. A little late in the game for him to finally start blooming a little bit. So that'll free up six spots for the 11 new faces. And down in the U18s, just two additional in Kevin Cole and Banda. Uh, both of them 40-41, 78-82 current uh, potential. Very much on the weaker end. And very much on the weaker end for training ratings. So that's eight outgoing, 11 incoming. That's three additional players. Um, that does free us up a little bit to start making some decisions in regards to others, because that does expand the squad slightly, but you know it's not a big deal on expanding the squad slightly. But you've got guys like, say, Tom Doran, who, eh, okay, current ability is a 69. He could almost play at that senior level, but he's also already nearly maxed out. He's already nearly as good as he's going to be. And in terms of the potential ability, you can see Banda and, and Doran are now the weakest players that we have. We're, we're starting to push into 80 and above just being a standard. And see here, not quite the case. Like Finn Coots, a 52-72. Healy, Forbes, like there's guys here that we can make some decisions in regards to uh, and part ways with as we're we're now pushing into an 80 or better minimum standard and really i'm trying to push that up to more like an 85 or better minimum standard but i think we're still one more year away from uh, reaching that stage and we're not even quite there yet when it comes to the senior squad either i mean kamara falls into that 85 plus territory but then kasango matumbo is a 75 88 He's almost as good as he's going to get. Primus, Walker are never going to be good enough. They're guys that have helped us in the short term and have been okay. I mean, Primus has a 7.15 rating, but we're going to be looking down in the depths of, of our squad to replace these two in the coming season because there has been development. There are plenty of players that are a 60-plus now, and we're going to definitely hope to... Uh, level up on those guys and then of course finally Grig who <laughs> I'm more than ready to uh, part ways with and with two U18 keepers now uh, who have some quality uh, we're definitely ready to uh, bring one of them along and that means Grig is likely to be number nine on the outgoing players list uh, maybe a Mark Walker kind of thing I mean he's pretty much maxed out but yeah Grig he has uh, current ability gone up by one this season so he, he's not completely out of the woodwork but in lifetime he's gone from a 46 to a 48 day before our very very key matchup on the road where we have had the trouble to to score points and connor mortland picks up a tight hamstring that's going to see him out for two to three days will he be available or can i at least bring him off the bench that means primus is going to be starting for us Thornhill can't do it. He's still out. Lanahan Penrice, we let go to get his recovery on. He's down to a week to two weeks on his. Both of those guys are a week to two weeks away, but that's going to make this a difficult match. In other news, our U18s have been pretty solid this year against a mostly championship side English U18 Division 2 with five wins, five draws, and seven losses. This is by far the best we've seen them competitively because they've always been playing many divisions above where we play in terms of you know who their opposition is U18 wise and they're starting to perform even the the U21s to an extent is performing still winless I mean they've never won a game our U21s have never won a game but last year I think they had three draws and that was the first 
I think they maybe had one draw previously, and then they had three last year. This year, six draws out of 17 matches. I mean, they're still minus 26. They're still weakest in the league. They're still last place. But it's it's so clear the progress we've made in filling out our squad and not just the senior level, but top to bottom. At least Moreland has passed his fitness test uh, and the condition and match sharpness are high. I, I think we're going to have to intend on playing him for this match as on the road at Real Bedford is a huge one that can just about lock the league up for us or put us in a dangerous position with a handful of matches to go. Can we keep our run of form going? Real Bedford, if you follow the FM23 series, is the closest thing to a rival that we've had in this entire series because they are the only team that we've played across multiple tiers and stayed with. I mean, obviously we're in the same tier for a second year in a row here, and so we're seeing mostly the same teams. But we've climbed the ladder outside of this span and the very beginning of the series, we've climbed the ladder every single season else along the way. And as a result, we've seen new teams virtually each and every season. And we've hardly seen the same teams. But as we've climbed the ladder, there's been one other team that climbed that ladder right alongside us, and that was Real Bedford. They turned professional crazy early. They were... Ice tier, ice tier, when they turn professional. And as a result, paying their players and playing full time, they had better selection than the teams around them. And, oh, come on. We're getting called for a penalty here on what's just a. What looks like a go up and challenge for a header situate. Wow. And we trail a game where absolutely nothing had happened yet. Players are upset now uh, from that one. And. I've always said in previous editions how you don't see what happened. What is the penalty that's being called? There was nothing here. FM24, they finally do have a mechanism where you see takedowns. You see those trips. You see those kicks. You see those pushes. There was no mechanism there. There was nothing. It was a clean, challenged header, and we cleared it away. Owen's oh, well offside. No flag? Don't even see how that ball goes in as it hits the, the crossbar. and looks like it's still bouncing on the line as well, but offside is offside. He's already offside before that ball's kicked. Jeez. See, that ball doesn't... Uh, it does hit the roof of the net and definitely goes in. But it looks like he's off. He's... He hasn't kicked the ball yet. He's still swinging his foot towards the... Ah. Wow. Two shots, two goals. This is what happened to us last time. Uh, the opposite way around. This is what we did to Gloucester, right? Five attempts the entire game, three chances, uh, two chances, two goals. And they've done that. They've literally taken two shots, and they've got two goals. One from the penalty spot, though. Absolutely ridiculous. Has changed this game. And we've got 70% possession. Have, have not managed to get a shot. Uh, we're going to go very attacking for the entirety of the half. Let's go ahead and up the tempo. Um, we're still going to work the ball in. Is set pieces going to do us any good? Well, the attitude's definitely better now than it was. But we give that one away, and you know, no Lanahan Penrys. Wilkinson didn't even move. That's given away. Wilkinson hasn't played in quite a while. And he's one of those guys who has the desire to leave the club, and that's part of the reason why we haven't played him. But I think it's because he hasn't played is part of the reason why. But he gets a chance to play, and what does he do? Plays like garbage. Goal kick. Jones, all the way to the edge. Tries to get it to Wilkinson, but Wilkinson gives up chasing it. That's onside, definitely. That was a big play. Big save from Julian. And we nearly give up a third. They've added three shots in just a few minutes to start the half. As we are going very attacking and opening this game up. McFadden. The cross. Oh, Rose gets there first. 
Davidson nearly gets on that from six yards. That would have been a massive chance. Oh, McFadden, come on, man. Control it with your chest. Bring it down. The defender wasn't with you. He was with the guy who just challenged for the ball. Over the top. Davidson. Oh, inside the post. Red flag raised. Ball was kicked well before he went behind the defender. That's my frustration and bias going out there. First one was apparently onside, and that one was apparently offside. My frustration is ringing out against the referee, but uh, we've already played an hour. We're going to have to make maybe a tactical change. Going very attacking hasn't amounted to anything just yet, Jones. It's that one. Wilkinson's been terrible. Yeah, we're, we're not getting the support we need up top. Let's let's go ahead and make the change in the middle of the pitch by Atkins is on a yellow. Let's make the change with him. I could put him on left wing. Bring in Primus. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this, and then we're going to bring on Primus. No, no, hey, hey, what was that? All right, so we're going to push the wingers up to get a, a bit more attacking. And then uh, Primus, the only ball-winning midfielder now. Mortland pushing up a bit higher uh, to support the midfield a little bit more. Try to create an overload. Uh, but Atacunle also going more attacking. Throwing caution to the wind here. This could get easily uh, result in a third goal. But we've got to try something. Atacunle, free kick. Goal! What a shot! That's the first one we've seen in ages. Go in the back of the net from a free kick. Atacunle beats the wall, curls it in just about towards the top corner there. And it's 2 1. Atkins. Martlow. Hassel. Primus! Oh! Primus went pretty close on that one. I think it was a little higher than uh, it first appeared. When it was played a little slower there on the on the replay. Oof. Yikes, that was close. Julian tips it over the bar, just tips it over. Uh, McFadden has picked up a yellow. Uh, do we want to bring on Kamara? He's having a really bad game and is ticked off. And Kamara can play wing back, so yeah, we'll we'll make that sub. Julian clutches that one. Ah, bad pass. He recovers though. Jones out of Kunle into some space. Long cross. Davidson wins it, but can't get any purchase on it. Gets too far underneath it. Heads it up really high. Uh, push that tempo up higher. Don't worry about the uh, work the ball under the box. We'll go for the early crosses. We definitely want to hit the counter. And go fast. Try to get the ball up a little bit faster. Atkins forces the turnover and then gives it away. Was he held? Turner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big save from Julian. Otherwise, this thing was over. One more change we want to make here out of possession. Much higher. High press is on. We've got one yellow. Yeah, go ahead and get stuck in. We're going to step up more. Time wasting a thing. 7-7 seven, seven on the shots. Jones. Out of Kunle. That's deflected. Kamara recovers. Primus. Inside Moreland. Kamara across to Davidson. He's gonna get there first. Atakunle! Oh big block. Woo -hoo -hoo. Atkins wins that header, gets it on target. Keeper saves it. Ay, bad throw, but we recover the ball. Atkins, that's deflected out for a corner. We're into stoppage. Two minutes of time. Atakunle. On the road, we have just not been able to handle these top teams in the league. Foot comes in, catches us. But we get called for a foul in the middle? Huh. That's a strange one. That's... That's... No points. Uh, 
uh, we were the better team in the final 20 minutes when we went all in and they, you know, they went defensive. But that penalty was the decisive moment. That penalty was the half their XG for the entire game. They only had two shots the entire first half and they had two goals. That was almost all us in the second half. But you got to play both halves, not just one. And of course, Gloucester wins their game, so we are right back down to a five-point game, a five-point lead in the league. Twelve points over Maidenhead, who have also been claiming their uh, points along the way. But there's only six left to play. There's only 18 points left out there, uh, so we are almost secure against most of the teams. I really still only feel uh, fear the presence of Gloucester, but we're right back where we were two matches ago with a five-point lead. Gloucester beating Torquay 2-0 at home. Next three matches are more winnable, 10th, 14th, 17th. Two of those at home. We've got to take care of business. We need to claim those nine points to set ourselves up for a potential championship. But the pressure's on this late in the season. Campaign steps up for Lanahan Penries to win player of the season. Heading into that, all three players that were injured are cleared and capable of playing. Getting back to a full-strength squad, though Thornhill, Lanahan, Penrice conditionally aren't quite there. Tight contest, but we do come out on top of lose 2-1. Uh, penalty for us, Lanahan, Penrice converting in the 33rd, but they they got one back. Consolation goal very late at Kunle. Put us ahead for good with a 2-0 lead in the 68th. But Wilkinson, who came on, presumably, for Lanahan Penrice late in that game, I put him on the bench, uh, intentionally knowing that Lanahan Penrice would not be able to play all 90. Wilkinson has picked up the injury now, so that's that's going to potentially leave us a bit shorthanded here uh, in the next at least couple of matches. But that's good. That was... That was big we now have five to play but still only a five point advantage maidenhead does finally drop some points they are 14 behind with five to play mathematically maidenhead and bromley almost out of it i mean they're, they're they are right at the limit one more win and it's down to us in gloucester but we've known that for a while that it was down to us in gloucester goal differential could could be a factor in this one uh, we are plus nine over them. Gives us a little bit more of a cushion. Five points can come pretty quick and easy. I mean, it's it's a loss and a draw where they win both, and there's five points. So for that, you know, we're still in dangerous territory. Uh, that wouldn't necessarily equal nine goals either. So, But five to play. Five to play. We can only afford to have a misstep twice in those final five and we're still looking at two more difficult matches so we really need to take care of business in those other three but the next two are the easier ones that should help mathematically we're still in a favorable position and meanwhile gloucester would have to win everything down the stretch as well so but it's awfully close isn't it it's awfully close with five to play. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Nick Hathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.